Welcome to AFL Access. I'm Joel, and I'll be doing a bit of a discussion video about the evolution of the halfback and how their role has changed in the 2010s to where it is today. When most people think about the halfback line, it is a link in the chain from the back line to the forward line. A kick from the fullback goes to the halfback flank, then dishing it off to the midfield and let them go to work. In other decades, the halfback line was just another brick wall to man the forwards with players like Glenn Jakovic, Nathan Bassett and Heath Grunding being the poster children for this style. Bruising defensemen, outmarking the forwards and bouncing it to the midfielders and letting them go to work. Breaking the games open was just the standard in the AFL. Now, there is no doubt that the AFL is a heavily midfield influenced game and the vast majority of the elite players and legends were and are midfielders. However, in recent years, the halfbacks have shown development and shifts in how they play their positions, and this can be seen with players like Brody Smith, Lockie Whitfield, Rory Laird, James Sisley, and many others stepping into the spotlight. One of the most common ways this evolution has been manifested is in the drive out of the back half of the ground. With a player like Lockie Whitfield, it can be with explosive running through the middle of the ground, linking back and forth with the midfield and then launching into the forward line, hitting up a target. With a quality midfield to provide support, hit up targets, and keep the flow of play going, the Giants have created what some might call an orange tsunami. With players leaving the Giants with regularity in the past couple of years, they have still been fantastic and have consistently been led to multiple final campaigns. Alongside veteran leadership from Heath Shaw, the Giants have been a force to be reckoned with in the AFL, which shouldn't surprise anyone looking at the talent that they have been developing over the years. Now, whether or not the talent lasts with many players leaving, we shall see. Other teams have been including these more quick and elusive halfbacks coming up through the midfield, such as Adelaide with both Wayne Miller and, more notably, Rory Laird. Laird, in particular, has been one of the standouts with this shift as he has been on the past two All-Australian teams and has pretty much become an extra midfielder for the Crows. The number of possessions usually expected of a small halfback probably ranges in the mid-teens, but my god, Laird has bust through the glass ceiling with multiple 40-plus possession games, which is damn near unheard of. What's even more daunting is that Wayne Miller may even be better, and he's only just 40 games in his career. Well... Enough with a crow circle jerk. There are many teams that are starting to play pretty much the extra midfielder off the half back line. Sam Doherty is one of those players. He's probably Carlton's most vital part of the team alongside Paddy Cripps. But unfortunately, due to injuries, a second ACL tear in 12 months, he is going to be out for a while, but I hope he can come back better. Other players like Michael Hurley and Michael Hibbard have also come out of the woodwork to become driving forces for their teams out of the back half, aiding already elite midfields. Now, one of the interesting cases of how halfbacks have been changing is with the case of James Sicily, who has been both a successful forward and a successful defender. There have been many terms across a variety of sports where a player has been touted for their versatility across two positions or two skills. For example, the dual threat quarterback in American football, where they are adept at running the ball and throwing it as well, such as Michael Vick or more recently Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens. It is also seen in ice hockey with two-way players or defensive forwards who are good scorers but also put in great defensive efforts. Examples of players like this are like Andre Kopitar in modern times and the legendary Steve Eisenman, who shifted his whole style to further support the Red Wings dynasty. Sorry for that digression, but I just wanted to illustrate further what it meant by dual threat players. Now that being said, James Sisley hasn't scored as many goals in the 2018 season, but has definitely improved his defensive games, which has seen him lock down forwards and stifle forward entries. Another player which has popped up as a great defender and in the clutch a goal kicker has been Jeremy McGovern, whose hands are second to none, a lot like his brother. Now, both players may not drift forward much next year, but Sisley has been shown to be a threat up forward in a pinch, even kicking five goals in a Rising Star-nominated performance. So, we shall see. 
Now, this bit of the video may be a bit of a love session for my mighty Adelaide Crows, but after watching many of their games in the last couple of years, I really started to notice these shifts in the style of the halfback. I think the player that really started me noticing the shift has been Brody Smith around about 2012, which was his second season in the AFL. And when I really started watching football again after a bit of a hiatus, the dark times of the Crows. Watching his game style off the halfback, the first thing you'll notice is his massive right boot, sending balls 50 metres up the wing, pretty much from halfback to half forward. The precision of these kicks and the marking opportunities could really break the game open for the Crows and allow them to get the ball down to forwards like Walker and Jenkins. Or, you know, if they think it's too far, handball it to him and let him have a ping from 50 plus out. But yeah, Smithers' kicking ability has really helped put pressure on opponents' defense and allowed for the taller forwards to lead up and take pack mark and allowing them to score freely or bring the ball to ground and let Eddie crumb the ball and pull off one of his signature miracle goals, either or. Another benefit of his booming right foot is being able to switch play from one side of the ground to the other. When both teams have pretty much bunched up one side of the ground, Smith's kick out of the back half flank to an unoccupied part of the ground and allow for the recipient to get a free run at the ball into the forward line has been a particular asset to the Crows. Similar to Whitfield, his ability to run off the half back line along with his penetrating kick also keeps midfields on their toes if he decides to go on a canter down the ground and into the forward half. In Smith's absence, Another Crow has stepped up, with Paul Seedsman being a leader in metres gained across the league for most of the season. He also loves to take pot shots from beyond the 50 metre arc, so I am absolutely hyped having them both being on the back half in 2019. Other guys who have really been dobbing it out of the back half have been Alex Witherden, Tom Phillips and Jared Polak, all of whom are pretty much defensive weapons in the upcoming season and should be on the lookout for. If you want to see one player who should be the next archetypical halfback for the next couple of years, Alex Witherden is your guy. This may be another step in seeing the Lions return to September action and a return of being a huge threat in the league. Anyway, to wrap it up, honestly this upcoming batch of halfback prospects have been the most exciting bunch of young players who could really shift the way the game is played. Think I'm full of it? Or do you think I have some decent slash interesting points? Either way, let me know in the comments below or on our Facebook page. Link in the description. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell to stay notified of all new content. The season previews will be coming soon. This has been your AFL Access.